So how do these form? Well, we're not going to get into how they actually are formed in the body, but it's convenient to think of them as forming in two different steps. The first step would be that the pentose sugar and the base react to form a nucleoside. So we got two words here that are just different in one letter. Nucleoside. You're far too slow. So the nucleoside, see the S there? The nucleoside consists of the sugar ribose or 2 prime deoxyribose plus one of those bases. That's called a nucleoside. The next step would be to take that nucleoside and react it with phosphate. There we go. What? Phosphate. And that will form a nucleotide. So the nucleotide is the nucleoside plus phosphate. Or we could think of it as the sugar plus the base plus phosphate. So that is how many components? Three. Like a triangle. Tri, T for three. The nucleotide has all three of them. The nucleoside is just the sugar and the base. formation first. That's the two subunit molecule. We have the pentose sugar bonded to a nitrogen containing heterocyclic base. So here, here's our base and here's our sugar. And it's going to um, react here. This is a condensation reaction. Remember a condensation reaction is you have two large molecules coming together to form one molecule and you have a small molecule given off. Here's our small molecule. This is giving off one water molecule. And we form this linkage between um, the ninth nitrogen. So they, they numbered these guys for you here. So it's nitrogen number nine and the one prime oxygen. And it's always in the beta configuration. And so what we end up with is a beta N glycosidic linkage. So this is always going to be sticking up. So it's a, it's a glycosidic linkage there. And the nucleosides have names. So this is the, the sugar and the base together. For the pyrimidine bases, you change this suffix to idine. And so you have from, um, you have cytidine, thymidine and uridine. So uracil is the base, but when it bonds with the ribose, it becomes uridine. For the purine bases, the ending is osine, and so we have adenosine and guanosine. If the sugar is the deoxyribose, then we add deoxy as a prefix. So you could have deoxycytidine, or you could have just cytidine. Oh, I thought I had a table there. I didn't. Then the nucleotide formation is we take the nucleoside. So here's the nucleoside, the sugar, and the base, and a phosphate group. The phosphate group attaches onto the 5' prime carbon. <coughs> so this is a uh, phosphoester linkage here. And now we've got the nucleotide. This is also a condensation reaction, and we get another water molecule coming out. And these are the guys that make up the DNA. This would be, I'm sorry, this would be RNA, because this is not uh, deoxy. <coughs> Any questions? Here's kind of a summary. So let's look at these guys, the nucleosides first.
So we have the bases for DNA are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. And those are their abbreviations. The nucleosides found in DNA are the deoxy. Because DNA is deoxyribonucleic <coughs> acid. And so these are going to be deoxyadenosine, deoxyguanosine, deoxycytidine, deoxythymidine. In RNA, we have A, G, C, but instead of T, we have uracil. And so the nucleoside names are here. Again, this is the sugar and the base. Now, when we make it a nucleotide, all three groups were adding a phosphate. And so to name that, we take the name of the nucleoside and we add the word, we add 5' prime monophosphate. Monophosphate, there's one phosphate group and it's attached on the 5' prime of that sugar molecule. So deoxyadenosine 5' prime monophosphate. How's that for a long name? So you can imagine that would get a little tedious. So we have abbreviations. So this is abbreviated DAMP. D for deoxy, A for adenosine, monophosphate. So all of these are going to have MP, but there's DAMP, DGMP, and then we have these guys without the D. Isn't that fun? Yeah. At least there aren't as many as there were monosaccharides, right? There were a lot of those.